Hey everyone, Laura here with Rags to Rugs and we're going to have so much fun today. We're going to be using some fabric scrap, that same scrap fabric that you have and I can't bear to get rid of because there's got to be something that you can do with it, right? Well today we're going to be using that scrap fabric to make decoupaged eggs that look just like this. I made this last night. I think it's so beautiful. Anyway, we are going to be using real eggs. I'm going to teach you how to blow out those eggs, the whites and the yolks, because I'm learning that people don't know how to do that anymore. And though eggs are expensive, you can buy a dozen of them for not that many dollars. And with some scrap fabric, these make great gifts. Um, now, if you've been following our YouTube channel, you know that there are many other videos on fabric scrap art, one of which was a frame that I picked up with this beautiful print at the dollar store, or excuse me, Goodwill, for $1.99, regularly $19.95. I didn't care for the frame, so I took it off and I covered it with some scrap fabric and I, it hangs in my laundry room and I love it. I think you might too. That's another video that's on there. We also took, picked up a lamp this actually is a lamp from the Kid Cave, our, where our grandkids' children hang out. And I took the uh, lampshade off and I covered it with fabric scraps and I think it turned out so cool and it's on their desk upstairs. There was another video that we did that you might be interested in. All these videos I'll provide links for at the bottom or you can just peruse through our YouTube channel because there's many videos on there. But my granddaughter and I made volley beads out of Batik fabrics and we actually made the beads and made bracelets and necklaces and that was a really really fun project now you can consider giving these beautiful eggs as gifts um, this is i'm going to teach you not only how to decoupage the eggs and how to blow out the eggs but i'm going to also give you a creative way to hang these eggs using a toothpick again very inexpensively so consider using them giving them as gifts you can put together a whole basket of them like i've got here or you might consider giving them in one small gift box to a teacher or a doctor or the mailman or whomever, lots of people, family and friends. Gather your girlfriends. This is a kid-friendly video, so gather the grandchildren if you'd like and do this with them. And it's gonna be really, really, really fun. Now displaying them is really simple. I picked up some suction cup hangers that you can include with your little gift, gift box and they can hang this from their window and let the sun show them off. You might do something creative like my grandson and I did. We went on a nature walk and picked up a piece of driftwood. We not only hung, hang the eggs, this actually hangs all the time on the chandelier right above me here in our dining room. And on it are other decoupage eggs that we've made. We also made some medallions using some uh, pony beads. And then these are some painted eggs, but these are all real eggs that you can use uh, wooden eggs or plastic eggs for this project as well. But all we did was drill some holes in a piece of driftwood and hang the eggs uh, from it and then put a little hanger up here and it, like I said, it hangs from the light right above us here. So anyway, gather up all your fabric scrap, go through your trash can. Uh, I've got my little basket that we're going to be using for this project and we're going to get started right away. Okay, so you've got a few things you need to round up. The first and most important of which is your friends and neighbors or your grandchildren, your children, because this is time for a party. We're gonna make these beautiful decoupage eggs and this is something that everybody loves and will enjoy making. So in order to make these beautiful eggs, you need to round up a few things. The first of which, of course, is your fabric scraps. I've got a big basket that we're gonna be using for this project. You've got yours, go digging through your trash can because I bet you anything, you've got a whole bunch of them that you can use. It doesn't really matter what type of fabric it is. Everything looks beautiful on these eggs. You're gonna need some Mod Podge. Now I do use Mod Podge fabric, but any Mod Podge will work and a small amount is all we need. If you've got some hours glue, some school glue, uh, just a small smidgen is all we're gonna need on this. If you don't have it, the Mod Podge will work just as well for your toothpick, uh, the, the way we're gonna uh, hang the, our eggs. Mod Podge Gloss, this is a spray on. I do like this, but you, you, know, you don't need to have this. You don't need to go out and buy some, but I kind of like it because it gives a sheen to our eggs and it does give it a little bit of longevity. So it kind of protects it a little bit. You need your eggs, of course, the most important thing beyond your friends and family. Uh, I do recommend that you leave these out for two, three, maybe four hours on your countertop before you start um, blowing them out because it'll make that process a whole lot easier. You're gonna need a few toothpicks. 
not too many, just a few cheap one toothpicks if you've got them. Um, and on that note, some thread that we're gonna wrap around those toothpicks to help display your beautiful eggs. Um, I do uh, round up a couple pieces of uh, plates and bowls out of my kitchen. This plate uh, we're gonna be using just to kind of keep all those drips right here in front of me instead of dripping out, especially if you've got children that you're working with. It kind of right here in front of you kind of keeps those drips together. And a bowl that we're gonna preserve those eggs, the whites and the yolks that we're gonna blow out of those eggs. So yeah, well, you can make scrambled eggs later for the kids. A, a one or two paint brushes, doesn't matter size or, or quality or anything like that, just some cheap ones or whatever. This is the coolest thing. This is an uh, ice pick that I picked up at a vintage sale or an estate sale. It is, talk about vintage, this is very, very, very old, but I realize that it comes in, it, it's the perfect thing to drill holes through my eggs. And so I've been using this for years for this project. And I also use it too for my ice. Um, you might want to round up a pair of shears. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I've got some little ones that we're going to be using today, but any size is fine. Just something to, to trim out and snip on your fabric. Um, something like this. Uh, this is going to help you um, blow out your eggs. This is a little tiny knitting needle. I've got a little tiny crochet hook and I've got a darning needle. If you don't have something like this, maybe just a long nail. Just something that you can put in that hole to kind of break up the yolk and the white and make it a little bit easier to blow it out. And I'll show you why that's important here in just a little bit. So anyway, on that note, let's get started with our eggs. Okay, so I've got everything laid out here, ready to do this. I hope I haven't forgot anything, and I hope this time I don't film the top of my head like I did the last time filming this all by myself. One thing I forgot to share with you, you might wanna gather up a, a wet rag um, for adults and for children. Sometimes it's, it's nice to be able to just wipe your fingers off when you're working with the Mod Podge. Um, I also want to share with you a few other eggs that I did last night in preparation for this, but also for Easter, because I want to give these as gifts. So these are some other color combinations. This is the one I shared with you earlier, but a few others. Anything goes. I think this one's got a kind of a masculine look to it, so it might be good for dad or grandpa or whatever, but they're all so, so beautiful. So I'm going to set those aside. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to blow out our egg. And this is something, again, that's so unfamiliar to so many people. They're like, what? I've never heard of this before. But the first thing I'm going to do is use my trusty little vintage ice pick. Um, and I'm going to, I kind of already did a starter hole just real quick here, but I'm going to insert my uh, ice pick right into that hole. Otherwise, all you're going to do is just kind of use this and drill into that very gently. And hopefully you can see this. I went ahead and kind of just got a little teeny tiny starter hole. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of back and forth and back and forth until I can get that ice pick all the way through that egg. Do it kind of gently because we don't want to obviously crack the egg, but if there are a few small minor cracks, that's okay. No big deal at all. We're going to be covering it with fabric anyway. So it looks like it's going in pretty easily. These have been left out on the counter for a few hours now, and the longer they're left out, the easier it is to do this. Okay. Ooh, it's already coming out. Okay, I'm gonna put it over my bowl here, and now I'm gonna do the other side. And again, I kinda of did a little starter hole just, just for the sake of the video, but all I'm gonna do now is go back and forth, applying just a little pressure. My ice pick just works so beautifully for this. I can't count how many hundreds of eggs I've done this with by myself and projects with the grandchildren. Oh, that one's really cracking, but that's okay. Don't let that bother you at all, okay? And in fact, sometimes that's for the best. Okay, we've definitely penetrated it. I even go, and if you're going to preserve the eggs, don't forget to sanitize your ice pick because if, depending on where it's been, you wanna make sure those eggs. All right, now this is where, I'm gonna set that aside. This is where either the knitting needle, the crochet hook, or the darning needle will come, into ha come in handy. What I like to do is just insert that and kinda spool it around, kinda break up the yolk and the whites. This is gonna be kind of comedy hour for some of you because I'm literally gonna put my mouth on this and hopefully without showing the whole top of my head with my roots that need to be probably dyed right now. But I'm going to lean into this and I'm gonna put my lips right on this <laughs> and I'm gonna blow and all that's gonna come out into my bowl and you can make scrambled eggs out of it. So here we go, you ready? It's as easy as that. 
Again, if that had been, and you can, oh, look at my lipstick on there. It doesn't matter. We're going to cover it with fabric anyway. The next thing you're going to do is set that aside for scrambled eggs, like I said. Wipe off my lipstick. That's funny. And we're going to wash this out, and then we're going to let it dry just a little bit. Now before, I'm going to wipe that off so you can see how awesome that is. Nice little holes in there, perfect for um, what I'm going to show you next is using that toothpick to allow for a way to display these. So I'm going to set this aside just for a minute. Now you can see I've already done a bunch of them that I'm going to continue on after this video. These are all ready to go. I'm going to wash this out and we'll put it in there and it'll be all ready to go as well. Before we do that though, I'm going to set aside my egg mixture. I'm going to take one of my toothpicks, and the reason I do this is because I want to give it a little bit of time to dry. And we're going to just feed off, ever how much you think, depending on how you want to display these or give them as gifts to display, feed off a couple feet is what I like to do. And what I'm going to do now is do a simple slip knot, just like we do in our crocheted rugs. I'm going to feed that around, back up through the center, find that little loop and give it a tug. We're going to tighten that down just a little bit. Insert our, I hope I have this right under the camera. Again, I'm doing this by myself, so I can't see what I'm filming. And I'm going to give this nice little tight nudge right there. Slide it down. Whoops, I didn't do it very tight. I'm going to do that again. Oh, I didn't do it tight at all. It's going to want to slide off of there. There we go, nice and tight. And I'm going to trim that little end off just a little bit right here. And this is where that Elmer's glue comes in. If you've got some, I do, but otherwise you can just use your Mod Podge. And I'm just going to put a little tiny smidgen right here just to secure that knot onto the toothpick. And I'll explain why in a minute. But at this point, we're going to set that aside and let that dry and get started decorating our eggs. I'm going to literally just set this right over here so we know exactly where it is. I'm going to take my plate now. I'm going to move it here. Uh, hopefully it's in the camera. And I did do a, a, a mixture of Mod Podge. It's about two parts Mod Podge to one part water. Don't overthink this. It's just, it's just uh, you know, doesn't have to be anything real exact. And I'm going to pour it in my plate. It doesn't take very much because we're just going to use that to adhere the fabric to the eggs. Again, here's my trusty rag here in case you get any drippings on you. I'll set these aside and I'm going to take one of the eggs that has already been uh, dried, cleaned and dried from last night. You see there's a nice little hole there, a smaller hole there. This one's got a little crack. It doesn't matter whatsoever. These are the scraps of fabric that I um, prepared for this, this class. As you can see, just beautiful. I did, again, choose Batiks. I love Batiks. They're so beautiful to work with and the fact that they uh, such vibrant colors, but also the front and the back are the same. We do have all these Batiks that you see here on fabric rolls and in loose bundles uh, that you can purchase from us. We also have small little bundles of scrap batik that you can purchase from us too for the, the Bali beads that I showed you earlier or for whatever projects you may be working on, your lampshade or your frames or whatever. These are ones that I kind of prepared for today's demonstration. And the first thing I'm going to do now is take one of those um, uh, paint brushes and again they don't have to be anything fancy just use kids brushes and whatever and I'm going to use that now to um, just put a little bit of Mod Podge straight up now this is not the the ones that I've mixed with water this is just straight up Mod Podge and I'm just going to put a th very thin coat on this I'm going to put a little bit of water on that because that is really thick again this is what why this is such a great project for kids because this is not something that you have to put a whole lot of thought in. There's no right or wrong. Everything looks beautiful when you're done with it. I'm gonna set that there for safekeeping. No, I'm not, because it's gonna roll off. Okay, we'll put it there. And I'm just gonna select randomly um, a few of the, the boutiques, and I'm gonna lay it across here. I try, to be honest with you, I try not to get too much on my fingers, because otherwise I'm constantly wiping my fingers off. And I'm gonna use my brush just to brush some of this on it. There's that hole and you can see I'm kind of to the right of it but don't feel like you have to um, hide that hole um, 
it'll be just fine. And simple as that, I'm gonna pick another one now and I'm gonna lay it right beside it. If you, Sometimes I drag it in this first and it helps it to kind of adhere a little bit better. I'm gonna lay it right on top of this one and move it over just a little bit. Again, take my little brush and brush some Mod Podge on it. It sometimes will slide and if it's not where you want it to be, that's okay. You can always slide it back. Let's pick another one. How about, uh, 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 I've already got that one and that one. What about a purple? I think that'd be pretty. I think kids especially really like, the, ooh, I'd really dip that one. I'm gonna lay that right next door to it. Use my brush to add some Mod Podge. Sometimes readjust it. That little corner wants to pop up, so it's a good time to kind of smooth that out. Move that over a little bit. Ooh, this is gonna be pretty. Uh, let's see, what about a yellow? That'll brighten this up and look real easterly. I like that. See what I mean? Sometimes your fingers get kind of sticky. And so it's nice to have a little cloth. I'm gonna move over here so it's a little handier for me to kind of wipe my fingers on it. Take my brush, smooth it out. Add some Mod Podge to it that's been kind of diluted with water. I'm going to move that just a little bit right there. Oh, this is going to be so pretty. I like these colors. I think I'm going to stick with those colors. I'm going to go back to that, the darker one here. I try not to move my fingers around too much on the egg. Got a little giddy up right there, so I'm going to smooth him out. Lay this over. You've got lots of uh, time to correct if you see something that's not quite the way you wanted it. And let's see, let's put one over here, okay? Uh, let's go back to the purple. And just kind of fan it through that a little bit. Since I've got a little bit of a gap right there, I think I'm just gonna move that over and lay it on there. You get the point, right? It's just a matter of painting with fabric and Mod Podge. Hoping this is right under the center. Add a little bit more as you feel needed. Now sometimes what I will do is set this aside to dry on this section and I'll start another one so that when I'm holding it, my fingers don't have a tendency to stick to the fabric that hasn't yet dried. But it will, you know, I generally will allow it to, to dry for 30 minutes or so. Let's see, what do we need? We need, how about a yellow? Again, I've got these already pre-cut, so that makes it a whole lot easier. You might consider doing the same thing. And lay that there. And how about one of these dark maroons? Can lay that here. Uh, you might get interrupted with a phone call or a child that needs you. This is one of those things you can set it aside. I keep the actual uh, egg carton here and I'll just set that in there to allow it to dry. Go tend to whatever business. Maybe there's homework. Maybe, this, maybe it's bath time. Maybe the kids just want to take a break from doing their egg project. Come back to it tomorrow. This is not something that has any uh, time element whatsoever. Let's do a purple here, what do you say? I'm just gonna lay it right on there. And whatever is pleasing to your eye, because I can assure you whatever you're doing here is gonna turn out so beautiful, you're gonna be amazed. Because it looks pretty right here, as you can see, it looks prettier when it's all dry and, and uh, you can really admire your work. Again, what a wonderful way to use little teeny tiny scraps of fabric. I think I'm going to put one right across here. I think that'd be kind of cool looking. Don't feel like you have to do all the same sizes either. They could be literally little teeny tiny pieces of fabric, little triangles or squares or whatever. It doesn't matter how small. In fact, there's a place for everything even on this one. I could, I could incorporate some other colors right now. Let's see, I think I'll just lay that right there and take my paintbrush, kind of smooth out a few of those areas I'm seeing and popping up. Hmm, 
let's turn my fingers again. What about a purple one there? And you can also see how quickly these go together. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. I will say that maybe the younger children in kindergarten may have a little more harder time uh, holding this. So maybe this would be more for uh, third and fourth graders or high school kids or whatever. What do I need? I need a yellow one. And you see why cutting these fabrics first makes a big difference. I'm just going to lay that right there. That's a good spot for it. You might have some little straggler threads. You can also use your paintbrush to kind of move that. I see one little straggler thread. I'm just going to move it back over. You won't be able to see it now. Ooh, look at this. Tell me that's not gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Uh, we need some pink. Now I could stop the video right now and uh, come back to the finish, but you know what? We're going to finish this real quick because it's not going to take much longer. So as you can see, it's start to finish. What do we need? We need a burgundy. Let's uh, move this a little bit. If your fingers get a little sticky, just wipe them off on your rag real fast. No biggie. Oh, this is so pretty. Oops, I got a little giddy up right there. And if you end up, you know, it seems like it's a little bit long and you just need to trim it, use your shears and just trim it off right there. It's okay. It's perfectly okay. Look at that. Look at that, you guys. Tell me this isn't going to be gorgeous. Now what you're going to do is, once you finish this up, I'm going to put one across here real fast. I think a pink would be really pretty. I don't think I need a whole one though, so I'm going to trim that a little bit shorter. With my trusty little shears there. Just drape it across. Don't overthink it. This is just a fun, easy little project. There's my hole right there, so I still have that showing. We only need one of the holes to put our our toothbrush or toothpick in. And so I'm going to show you how fun that's going to be. And we're nearly done with this egg project. At that point, what we're going to do is just allow these to dry. I usually let them dry overnight, so you know, take that in consideration if you've got if you're using this as a gift. I'm going to drape that on there. Where's the hole on this end? Ooh. There's the hole there, so I think I'm going to use my little shears. I'm going to trim that off. And I think you get the point. So to uh, for the sake of the video, and I don't want to get this too long, I might just leave it right there, but just continue to cover it uh, however looks best for you. Sometimes I take my rag and I just dab at those excess areas too kind of give it a look-see and make sure there's not any that might need to be um, secured down a little bit more. You can also use just a little bit of straight Mod Podge that's not been uh, diluted because that guy just seems to be a little bit stubborn. He wants to just keep popping up. You won't see this at the end. The Mod Podge dries transparently so you won't see any of this on there. Okay. I'm going to put this in my little, I'm going to wipe that down just a tiny bit there. There we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to set this in here for just a minute. I'm going to do it this way so that that one spot. And we're going to come back to our toothpick. And I want to show you this really, really awesome way to use a toothpick, some thread. I'm going to set this aside too. All right. So we put that little dollop of, of glue there. I don't know if it's completely dry or not. It may not be, in fact. I'm going to just take my nail and I'm going to break it right there. Hopefully I'm right there under the camera. I wish I had eyes behind that camera when I'm doing this. Okay, there you go. It feels a little wet, so we may have to pause this and come back to this, but we'll see. And what I'm going to do, and of course you're going to finish this, the rest of this by covering it, but what we're going to do now is we're going to insert that toothpick with the thread that's on that. I'm going to use another toothpick, kind of just shove it down in there, like that. Now give it a tug. Be down in there, let's make sure he's down in there first. 
There we go, all the way down in there. Now when you give it a tug, that toothpick turns, and look at that, ta-da. The, the, the toothpick turns on, on side, and so it just secures right in that hole, and then you can use however you want to display this, in your window or whatever. At this point, let's, let's do a few more, just because I want you to get a really good feel of how beautiful this is. How about a couple short burgundies across the top here? You can kind of see. And we'll do another one over here. Fast, fun, easy, gorgeous. Gifts that last and last and last and are so appreciated. The kids and I are gonna box these up. My mother's gonna get a gift at her retirement community, and I, I can just almost hear her share this with everybody. It's like, look what the kids made for me. Oops, where's my brush? Here it is, over here. Mm. A little bit more on there. Let's make sure that's all flat the way we want it. You get the point, right? Okay, so look at that. Tell me that's not, not if I put it under the camera anyway, not gorgeous. So anyway, there you have it. A wonderful gift. You're gonna finish up those little white areas there with a little bit more fabric. You're gonna pick and choose. I can just imagine my kids anyway going for the turquoise and the blues and the purples, of course, if they're girls and the pinks and whatever. But you can see what tiny, tiny bit of fabric that we use for this one beautiful egg. Allow it to dry overnight. And like I said, you might consider um, using some Mod Podge gloss to give it a, a clear, uh, acrylic seal it says right on there it doesn't take very much and allow that to dry then and then wrap this up give it as a beautiful gift to someone very special and dear to you and know trust that they're going to love this gift I'm going to cut this and do one more because I see one little spot there that I think just is needing ah if I could hold it and cut at the same time I'm going to put one right here just so we can kind of finish this up a little bit. Here we go. Put it over here so you can see it. Selfishly, I had it right under where I could see it. A little bit of Mod Podge. And you can see also how much little, what little bit of Mod Podge we use too. Eggs that are expensive, like I said, right now. But hey, you know what? It didn't, doesn't take much to make that. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. You'll finish that up in the, while it's drying, slip it back into the egg carton, wipe your fingers off, and start in on the next one. Because as you can see, we've blown out a whole bunch of these eggs all ready for your party. Whoever wants to come to your party and help you make these beautiful eggs. Um, what fun, what fun, what memories. Um, again, check out the other videos on fabric art on our YouTube channel. Uh, I hope I didn't breeze through this too fast. Um, if you have any questions, obviously, I do a very good job of responding to uh, comments on, the, on each of our videos. I try to check those every single day and answer any questions you may have. Uh, but in the meantime, um, please stay involved. Please check out the rest of our videos. Please subscribe if you would. It means a lot to us. And if you have any suggestions or questions, that's a great place to put them too. And in the meantime, as always, make it a great day. Thanks for watching.